Hello my viewers, the time has come for me to produce another Hexmanic Advanced tutorial. What's in store for today is advanced number 6, getting started for developers. This is probably going to be part 1 of multiple parts. This video will be centered around getting local builds of Hexmanic Advanced that may be different from the releases. I will show you how to set up Visual Studio and GitHub Desktop. Then I'll talk about updating HMA source code and we'll get into using Visual Studio to construct Hexmanic Advance from its code. If you'd like to see more videos, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So you might notice that I'm at the releases page of HMA. To get to that, I'm going to tell you all a short story. Last year, I was making tons of move animation scripts, and there was a bug in HMA that made a very common command virtually useless, which frustrated me. You can see on screen what used to happen. The bug was introduced in 0.4.3.5, and it was fixed to debug versions later. To partially circumvent this two-month waiting period, I learned how to build the program from Visual Studio, so I could use a local build that had this bug fixed before May 15th. As you saw on screen, however, those two debug versions came out two months apart from each other, but these public updates come out less frequently. Thus, if you're normally content with using public updates instead of debug versions that are in our Discord, you might want to follow along this demonstration to capitalize on a fixed bug as soon as it's been fixed. I should also mention that there's only one primary developer of Hexmanic Advance, and he does not code this thing for a living, so please cut him some slack and give him the time that he needs to make Hexmanic Advance greater than ever. Alright, let's start installing some programs. I'm going to start with Visual Studio, and I'll have these URLs in the description. So Visual Studio is the IDE that you can use to take a look at HMA source code and construct the application. The community version is free, so you can go ahead and click free download for that one. If you've seen my basic tutorials, you'll find this website very familiar. On one hand, you need .NET 6 desktop runtime for HMA to run, but you'll also need .NET SDK to build HMA, and it's over here. Install the Windows installer for both things. And as for x64 versus 86, that varies on the type of PC that you have. You're also going to need to go to this website in order to install GitHub Desktop. Click the purple download button in the middle, or the purple text that says Windows MSI. Once you download the installer for Visual Studio, you will see this dialog. Just click continue, and the installation process will begin. Now you're going to be instructed to install specific workloads and components that are part of Visual Studio's Swiss Army Knife. In the Workloads section, the only one that should be selected is .NET Desktop Development. On the right side of the screen, you're going to notice some optional modules you can install. Feel free to install as many as you want, but I'm only going to install the main ones that are necessary. Development tools for .NET, .NET Profiling Tools, and the Debugger. As for individual components, make sure that .NET 6 runtime is installed. .NET SDK is installed, C Sharp and Visual Basic is installed, and that's about it. There are some checked components that you cannot uncheck because they just come with the workflow. It's okay if you end up having some stuff that you're never going to use, unless you're really trying to save storage on your hard drive. Now that everything is configured, you can click one of the install buttons, and then you will have to wait 15 minutes for all of the packages to install. I sped up the footage to 50 times. I wish this process was actually this quick. When you open Visual Studio for the first time, you'll be prompted to sign in or create an account. For our purposes, you don't need an account for this. So I just click skip this for now. In the dropdown, have Visual C Sharp selected. 
Now that Visual Studio is ready to use, you can now get Hexmanic Advances repository on your computer and load the files here. You can use GitHub Desktop for this step, and you will need to every time the source code updates. But to get the thing on your computer in the first place, you can just click this button right here. Now you have to enter the URL for Hexmanic Advances GitHub repository. I'll type it on screen, and I'll also provide it in the description. Click Clone when you're ready. It's going to take some time to actually transfer the files to your computer. And finally, you'll be at the IDE of Visual Studio with the repository loaded. I'm just going to close the What's New tab real quick. And you can now focus on the four projects that make up the solution itself. If you just cloned the repository, all of Hexmanic Advances code is fully up to date, even more so than release and debug versions. Now we've fully configured Visual Studio, and we can now set up GitHub Desktop. When you open up GitHub Desktop for the first time, you'll be greeted with this screen. You'll need your GitHub account to use the software to its fullest, so I'm going to sign into mine off camera. If you don't have one, you can just make one. It's free and easy to make. This step requires me to configure my login information so that I'm aware that it would be publicized if I made commits to a repository. So in this Get Started screen, you can click Clone a Repository from the internet if you didn't do so already. Or in my case, I'm going to add an existing repository from my hard drive. Now I'm just going to select the folder that had the repository I cloned via Visual Studio. I press Add Repository, and now I'm good to go. The setup process has been complete. Now let's talk into why we are using GitHub Desktop. So say it's been a while since you've last cloned Hexmanic Advance. Either you completely forgot about building Hexmanic Advance, or you already built it but want an updated version. Either way, you can use GitHub Desktop to stay up to date with the code. To make the software search for new commits, click Repository at the top, then select Fetch. In my case, there were still 11 commits that are very recent to HMA's repository. In addition to the middle of the screen, anytime that you have commits from the source code that aren't in your computer, you will have this option to pull origin that will grant you the changes. So I click Pull Origin. And I'll need to wait a little bit until the changes made it to my local repository. This last bit is optional, but possibly worthwhile if you're really curious. Next to the changes section, you can click history to see all the file changes from the commits. Alright my viewers, let's move on to the last objective where everything is about to come into place. Now I'm back in Visual Studio where I have HMA loaded. Now, if I want to build the solution so that I have HMA in the form of an EXE file, hover within the Solution Explorer and right-click hexmaniac.wpf. You can ignore the bunch of text that just showed up. Right-click and set a startup project. Now if you look at the top, a little to the right of the center, you now see hexmaniac.wpf next to the green play button instead of hexmaniac.core. Check over there to keep track of what the startup project is. While the green play buttons can be used to run HMA, either with or without debugging, all that matters is building it. Click build, then click build solution, or press the F7 key. Now on the bottom left of your screen, you should see the words build started. Depending on the size of your screen, you might also see a build log show up. That keeps you up to date for what is going on on a technical level. Build may take a while. This one took 15 seconds. The build has succeeded. Now what I can do is open File Explorer and dig deep enough to find the executable. So I'm gonna start spelunking by double clicking the artifacts folder, then hexmaniac wpf, not the one that has a lot of letters after it, as that directory is empty. Inside the former, go to bin, then debug, and once you click net 6 windows, notice what's inside. 
All of the files you see here, including the .exe file, show up in a zipped download of HMA. You can even double-click Hexmanic Advanced.exe, and it will run just like any other Hexmanic Advanced executable. Thus, you could run Hexmanic Advanced with the newest possible changes, as if you skipped the line at a coffee shop. It's possible that when building Hexmanic Advance, you might run into errors with NuGet. I can show you how to fix those in Visual Studio. First, type NuGet in the search bar and click Package Manager Settings. If you haven't already, you need to have these top two options checked so that NuGet catches errors while you're not looking. Next, in the Solution Explorer, Right-click where it says Solution Hexmanic Advance and select Restore NuGet Packages. Because I had no issues in my instance of the Studio, you can see in the output that nothing happened. And that's about it for Visual Studio, at least for now. There's a lot more you can do with it in the context of HMA. To wrap up this tutorial, I'm going to go back to HMA's GitHub page. If you scroll all the way down, there's a link to a developer guide for folks who want to contribute to Hexmanic Advances development. It's underneath the Getting Started heading and the As a Developer subheading. By following the hyperlink, you'll get taken to this page. This guide in particular talks about various technical terms that relate to the functionality of the program. If you want to change code to fix bugs or implement new features, then it would help to get the information about these various data types. This page will also be linked in the description, so you can read it at your leisure. At this point, there's not much more for me to talk about. Now you have all the information to set up an environment where you can build HMA, instead of strictly downloading it from Discord or GitHub. I did say there could be more parts to this tutorial, so you'll have to stay tuned for them in other HMA tutorials. If you have any questions, leave a comment or ask in our Discord server, and we might be able to answer them. Thanks for watching and continue your pursuits in the field of ROM hacking.